why is that moving? Hey friends, welcome back to my studio. So I saw these super duper cool rib cage vests and I was like, wow, look at that. Can I incorporate that into my daily fashion? Wait, I don't leave the house. So I want to make a rib cage vest with a ruff entirely out of crochet. I really want to make that and I think it's super achievable to do in hopefully a short period of time. I'm trying to think of what era in Euro European history was wearing the ruff first. Like what did, was it the Dutch? Just to manage expectations, I have no intention of making this a pattern or a tutorial. I'm just making the thing and I'm making it for myself and a lot of it's probably going to be freehand and I'm not going to be paying attention to stitch counts. Yeah, this is this really is not going to be a pattern, but I hope it serves as inspiration for you. And uh, if you want to make it, I'll just tell you how I made it and good luck. So I'm going to try to, I think, make the majority of it from white because it's going to be uh, ribs and a ruff. So I think what I'm going to do is start with a ruff because I have an idea about how I would accomplish this and I'm hoping that it actually won't be too hard. Hard. So this is going to be a really, really rough sketch. I'm going to make a rough. This kind of looks like a clown collar at the moment, but I'm hoping that it won't at the end. So we're going to start out with the rough, which I think will be easy enough to make, I hope. So this is just four weight acrylic yarn. Pulling out my trusty five millimeter crochet hook, slip knot, start out 21. You know what? Let me do 22 and then I'm going to half double crochet. So yeah, we'll just half double crochet across. You want to skip one. Go next, skip one. So I half double crocheted across here, and then I want to got towards the end. I chained one, half double crochet. Chain one, half double crochet at the end. So now I'll go to my next row and chain two, turn, actually be a chain three because I'm going to skip that. Let's see, does that give me enough of a lacy kind of look? Maybe, maybe it does. what this is, is really supposed to be how far it sticks out. Wow, that's a bit much. I don't think I intended that because I want the rough to stick out a little bit beyond my chin. So maybe, maybe I want it to be about four inches deep, which this is wrong. You know, let's back up. Just beyond my chin maybe three to three and a half inches. I'll actually just unravel this and take a couple stitches out so that this is actually the length, the depth I want it to be. So maybe I'll go back and I'll have this be 14 stitches. I'm gonna chain 14 plus two. I'm gonna keep working in half double crochet. So let's see. It's maybe a little bit longer than I wanted. Yeah, so this is really more like four and a half inches, but I might just go with it and see because the roughs that I'm really taking inspiration from, some of them were really ostentatious. Uh, so uh, go big or go home. I mean, I already am home. Oh, I probably did messed up my stitch counts already, but eh. And that's why this is not a pattern <laughs> because this is all freehand and I am hiding my crimes. Okay, 
So it's been a minute, uh, but hey, I'm back. I made a little bit of progress on uh, this costume. In precisely no way am I upset about this. I love it so much. Last we left off, I was making uh, a piece like this. I did wind up abandoning the pattern. I was trying to get a, um, you can see, like a lacy sort of effect right on the end. I found that this was really inconsequential. I wound up just making pieces out of, uh, oh my God, what stitch is this? I think half double crochet. And I just made a couple strips about this length. And then I wound up, I'll show you, just like accordion folding them to get that ruffle effect and then sewing them through on one end. I have a couple of these. I still have to finish maybe what I'm hoping is the last one. Am I seeing out anymore? No, only in. Mm. I did wind up having to change uh, yarn because I ran out of the original yarn. This yarn is a little bit, it is the same weight. It's still a four, but it is lighter than what I was originally working with. Uh, am I just going to work with it? Yeah, I sure am. I have finished crocheting these two strips and now they are ready to be transformed into ruffs. This is a sharp darning needle, which I used in my sweatshirt, crochet sweatshirt video. And I do find that makes this process a lot easier. I'm not being very precise. Do this about the same. at one length and I'm just tying these off in a nice double knot. Wow, my hands are really shaky today. If you take a look and envision like this is where my neck should go. Right now it looks like these fully wrap around to like make a necklace. I do need to leave some space in the back uh, for a clasp for a closure so I can get this on. Ooh, sorry, bumped my mic. So I can get this on and off. What I think I need to do is make another flat piece of crochet to sew all of those onto and then affix a clasp to that. Now I do have some little closures already, um, just some little claspy closures. I'm hoping these will be sufficient. I made this. Now I'm going to uh, cut my yarn and sew the little claspies that we looked at earlier on there and then start sewing these onto here. Now this is, this needs to support some substantial weight because there's going to be a lot of these on here and that those all together are several ounces. So I might just go with these uh, big honking doodads right here and I might do three or four. So I've done it. I have to secure this somehow. It's also going to be on the back. But so this is the base. I'm also just like kind of not mad about how this looks in general. This is the thing that I'm going to sew all of these onto. It's a very poor job, but I did wind up doing four clasps across to try to give it as much stability as possible. In the event that I would say likely event that these wind up being too much weight for this. I feel like I can just go and add a piece of fabric 
to this relatively easily to stabilize it, fabric that will not have stretch. Even though I crocheted the necklace quite tightly with a four millimeter hook, uh, this still inherently has stretch. So if you apply uh, weight to it, it is going to pull. Let's go ahead and add the ruffs. I feel like I wanna start in the middle and I'm gonna center it between the clasps. I've just gone like up through. I don't know what method of sewing I wanna do, so I'm just gonna pick up both sides of those again. See how well. So it is draping down, which I did kind of expect, honestly. I'm going to keep going. I feel like I'm gonna problem solve a bit more once I see it at the end. I don't know if I will have to do anything like adding wire. I'm gonna forge ahead and problem solve once I see what the final situation is. I have finished the rough and it is beyond my wildest dreams. I'm thrilled to pieces with how this has come out. I can't believe I made this. Fashion. It is positively ridiculous. <laughs> ah, I can't! It turned out being rigid from uh, just condensing so much fabric together at once and then sewing it together, which I did quite crudely, but I was going for uh, security as opposed to uh, aesthetics or craftsmanship. So yeah, you can see like, it's not pretty in there, you know, flops around on its own, but then when I'm wearing it, it holds up quite well. I wanna get through the actual rib cage vest because while that is significantly less fabric involved, I will have to do just less crocheting. It will require quite a bit of engineering to make the rib cage vest. I'm feeling good right now. There's like the stages of a, a project. Neutral, where you start out, and then like feeling good, and then bad, and then like, oh, maybe feeling good, and then bad, and then just like, that's just what happens. What I'm thinking for this vest is having a neck piece that goes around my neck like a necklace and will hide under the ruff, and then having the sternum, more or less, which is the your breastbone that goes straight down, that will anchor the ribs to it. Now the ribs are gonna wrap around my body and I'm pretty much gonna have to make like a spine on the back for these ribs to attach to. Now the actual human rib cage has a total of 24 ribs or 12 on each side. That's not gonna work for this. That's just too many and I cannot do that very well. So I'm gonna go for a simplified version of a rib cage that'll still read really well and come off as a rib cage, but me be much more like cartoony. Two of the most important things is that I can get into it. So I'm gonna have to leave this space for armholes. Uh, so these ribs here could, may or may not actually happen. And then uh, attaching it, like closing it on the back, which I think I know how I wanna handle. From my sketch, I'm gonna go from the top down more or less. Uh, I'm gonna need the piece that fastens around my neck that's gonna go under the collar. And that's just to keep the actual vest on me. So I'm gonna start with that piece. So I made this little piece right here. I did switch to half double crochet part way through. And I also stopped uh, counting my stitches because uh, no, we're just not about that life. I think I need to add just maybe a couple more rows. So it's gonna be like a collar and then the sternum is going to come down from it. You know, remember the ruff really sticks out quite far. So you're not gonna be able to see this part. It kind of just looks like a tie at the moment. But so this is the sternum piece that all of the ribs are going to connect to. I sewed on quick and dirty, another clasp exactly like I did previously. This is what I'm thinking for the back. If I just make ribs that come off of the sternum, go all the way around, this is gonna be impossible for me to get into. I want it to open in the back, so like this, be able to open and I'm thinking having these two pieces more or less lay on top of each other and connect up here. And now if some of the ribs are attached to this piece and other ribs attached to this piece, it opens entirely and I can just slide my arms into it.
All right, so I finished the first rib. This is what it's looking like so far. Here's the rib I just made that has to go under my arm. So I want to slide my arm up through that. So that's what you're going to see of the rib here. And I think I'll do another one, two. I want to see if I can fit a total of four. I'm going to sew this on and I'm going to make the other ones. I think I might do this off camera and report back once I have this fully assembled. Once I sew everything together, I could call this finished. I did run out of yarn. Uh, so the last two, oh my God, what size are they on? These last two ribs uh, are a little bit of a different color, but hopefully you can't see that on camera. I was not gonna run out and buy more yarn for this project. I was using exactly what I have in my stash. One of the inspiration pieces for this I saw was uh, a rib cage vest and it was covered in pearls and I absolutely loved it. I tried gluing some old pearls onto a swatch of half double crochet acrylic yarn and it worked reasonably well. Like they're not popping off right away. I don't think these are the most secure things in the world, but I can most definitely like glue pearls all over this thing as if it weren't already bananas just take it into the stratosphere just make it absolutely completely bonkers pearls just arrived in the mail today i'm so excited there's five different sizes and i'm going to glue these all over everything now there's not really too much to say here. I am just gluing on five different size of pearl beads with a hot glue gun. I feel like by using a hot glue gun, the heat from the glue like fused with the acrylic yarn and created a very strong bond. So all the times I put this vest on and off, none of the beads popped off. Uh, so it was very, very secure. I will say though that gluing the beads on did add a significant amount of weight to the vest. I would have added even more, but I felt like the vest was stretching out just during the process and it did stretch out quite significantly while it was wearing it. So I did try to focus at the application of the beads more towards the middle and the sternum of the vest and not really on the back side of the ribs. Uh, even so, no regrets. This looks amazing and I can't wait to show you. All right, so here's the finished look. And um, it's not giving the vibe that I was hoping for, which was more uh, spooky Victorian as opposed to a spooky court jester. However, I'm not mad about it. Overall, I'm really satisfied with how this project turned out. While this is giving me more so like spooky court jester, as opposed to Elizabethan or even Victorian uh, skeleton, which yes, I know those two periods are hundreds of years apart. Yeah, it's not giving me, it's not giving me either of those. It's really giving me more spooky court jester. And really, I'm okay with that. I think the look is really cool and I absolutely love how the uh, rib cage specifically turned out. It reads really great on camera and hopefully that comes across to you all. So everything I'm wearing, this is a uh, black bodysuit. <laughs> the best one I could get actually has these zippers in it. I would have loved something even tighter. Black leggings. Uh, I did get a corset underneath because I wanted uh, a really fitted structure underneath. It really does let the ribcage vest show off and I think it reads really well. So I added extra weight to the vest with the pearl. It is pulling and adding weight and stretching out the crochet here. So that's something to keep in mind. I can work around that either by making these shorter and tighter so when they stretch they still look good or uh, I could back them with fabric which would give them a little more stability and not really let them stretch out. I did have to tape some of the ribs in place just with regular scotch tape and they're holding up great. So I didn't realize that I actually did not film a proper sign off for this video, but I just want to share in these last few moments with you how proud of myself I am for this project. I've never made anything like it before in my whole life and it's so cool. My 
favorite fashion designer is the late great Alexander McQueen and I feel like this would, I don't know, make him proud in a small way. Or let me just imagine that it would. But I've never made a full garment before. I have never done anything like this before. And it came out so cool. I'm really proud of this design. I will link my inspiration for this piece down in the description. Uh, I don't have the copyright permissions to share the actual photo of it, uh, but I am not the first person nor the last person to ever come up with the idea for a rib cage vest specifically for Halloween or putting pearls on it. But this is my interpretation of it. And just a note, I've been really struggling here on YouTube and to do something that I really wanted to do to do something so creative really just replenished me in a bit of a way. And I'm so glad to have shared this with you. Thanks for being here.